Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome back to another pinhole photography episode. I haven't done one of these for a while, and I thought I'd go out and shoot the LaRouge 6.6. It's been un just under a year now that I started to get into pinhole photography when I bought this camera from Greenwich Cameras in Spitalfields Market in London, and since then I've loved using it. I've also got another pinhole camera from the guys at Renisa in Belarus. They're a fantastic company, do lots of pinholes. I'll put a link in the description of this video. But today uh, I went out and shot this pinhole LaRouge 6.6 camera, 6x6 medium format, and I stuck a roll of Roly Retro 80S. Do you remember the film that I shot with Gaz? Uh, but this time I developed it in Xtar 1 Part 2 just to pull the contrast down because I found it quite punchy previously in Rodnoll, and it seemed to have worked. I've come back with some great negatives. Today was a nice cloudy day, the tide was high, and it was quite windy, so I took this down to the beach to see what I could get. And one of the things I like using about pinhole cameras, one of the things I like using pinhole cameras for is, you know, the non-thinking sense. You just take the camera, you plot it up, as long as you've got your exposures roughly right, you just open the shutter and close it again. There's not much to think about, only other than, you know, hoping the picture's gonna come out okay and it's composed correctly. So um, anyway, I'll show you the video, I'll show you where I was, a little bit of fun and games down the beach, and then we'll get back in the dark room and we'll make some prints. So you saw the compositions I was trying to get down the beach. The negatives look great. Let's get in the dark room and make some stonking prints. So I come back with some really nice negatives to work with and I've already started to make some prints. I need to make some more prints for my website. So I'm gonna do that in this session and show you guys how I made these prints. And they're very basic the way I did it, just using a two and a half grade filter. A couple of them, or I think one of them, I used a zero and a five, a bit of split grading. But other than that, that was pretty good negatives to work with and the prints were easy to make. So I'll get on and show you how I made these prints. So the first one that I printed was real easy to make. As I said, good negative. And you can see the wave. I was waiting and waiting for the wave to, to, to hit the right spot before I opened the, the pinhole shutter. And it's always hit and miss, you know, with pinhole. Um, but I managed to hit this one quite nicely. So what I did, I just did normal test strips and it gave me eight seconds. I was using F16 on the enlarger and a two and a half grade filter. 
I then put another piece of paper in, just a smaller test at those settings, and I was quite pleased with the tones that I got. So then I put a larger piece of paper in, the paper that I'm printing on, and I was quite happy with what I've got. So you can see that overall hit image here, and all I did for eight seconds uh, was a two and a half grade filter, F16 on the enlarger, but for about two or three seconds, I just dodged this white area here where the um, white water is as the waves were coming in and out. I just dodged that little tiny bit and a little bit over here. So you'll see me do that in a moment when I'm making a reprint of this. And all that's doing is just stopping the light, hitting the paper so the water or the white water stays whiter and doesn't start to go gray. I want that to pop, so that's what I did. And then, stupidly, I decided to put some vignette in on this print. So again, I used my dodge tool and stopped the light hitting the center of the image so it gave this vignette look around the edge, but it was a little bit too dark. So I need to make another print without the vignette. Let's get on with that now and I'll show you how I did it. So this is my template that I've already made up for my easel, if you like. Just slide the paper under there, shuts the rest of it off, and that's my projected area. It's a seven and a half by seven and a half print that I'm making. And I'm using Kentmere's Lustra paper, which is a resin coated paper. Okay, so let's turn all the lights off and get working. So with this print, the first thing I need to do is make sure that my horizon is straight. And the way I do that on this is just use a ruler and a measure between the horizon or the sea edge there down to the bottom of the print. So you can see this is a negative being projected onto the baseboard. There's no paper in there yet. Um, looking at the negative, you can see this dark, this uh, uh, light area here is obviously reverse so it's going to be dark and this is the white water area here that I need to dodge with my dodge tool just for a few seconds around there and a little bit around here as well just to make the white water pop a little bit more other than that it's a very simple print to make so let's uh, put it to f16 that we said okay and I could choose a um, more open aperture f f4 f5.6 but it's not gonna give me that long to play with. So I'm using F16, so that gives me, uh, what do we say, eight seconds. So in that eight seconds, it will give me just a bit of time to do some, some dodging. Just do one quick focus check. And I'm glad I did. Very fine grain, this uh, 80S film. I can just about see it, but there it is there. Okay, let's make a couple of reprints. Good to go. Eight seconds, we said. And just one little waft. Make sure no hairs are falling on that paper. F16, two and a half grade filter, eight seconds. A few seconds of uh, dodging around the sea area. Done. I'm not going to vignette, like I said, but... There is a very, very small, minute speck of dust on the negative. That's not going to bother me unless you go right up close to the print with a magnifying glass. Who does that? And then it goes. First print being made. It'll take a couple of minutes in this Kentmere. This is Ilford's multi-grade developer. Uh, it's now starting to get the rich tones coming through. I, I do love this uh, this image. This print's really nice. And this paper gives some really lush tones as well. So while that one's fixing in the fixer tray, I'll just put on another reprint of that one. And exactly the same again. The hardest part is when you're trying to figure out your times but after you've done that as long as you've written your times down any reprints shouldn't take well, should only take as long as they take to uh, project and a little bit of fiddling about right okay uh, second reprint going on eight seconds a little bit of 
dodging. Done. This one goes in the developer. And now I can even wash the other one. So my right hand is the one I've just fixed and my left is the one I'm developing at the moment. This one's going to be washed now. Another minute in there while I'm washing this print. If any of you guys like these prints, and there's a description in the uh, video to my website, you can purchase one of these prints, the ones that I'm making at the moment, and it all helps um, fund my darkroom for more paper, film, and chemicals. So you'll be doing me a favor if you do purchase one. Worldwide, free postage. So I'm gonna change this around a little tiny bit. I'm just gonna dodge the groin area up here just for a second or so, eight seconds. So I'm just gonna stop the light hitting a little bit of that groin there. Brighten up, there you go, that'll do. Now it's time to burn in the sand. I'll just leave the timer on. In fact, I won't burn the sand. I'm going to burn the, um, the horizon in just a little bit. So here we go. That'll be enough. And then just round to the left side of the sand. And then just trickle it over the right side of the sand sort of wave it in and into the corner done and that's it and let's develop this one uh, same again couple of minutes developing this Kentmere paper takes I've noticed twice as long as Ilford's paper but personal preference I do like the Kentmere paper it's a little bit cheaper um, but not a lot but that's not the reason I buy it I buy it because I like it I'm used to it and I like the tones that it gives and that's coming out nice I'm glad I dodged that groin a little bit and it just gives it a little tiny bit of texture on it I didn't need to do any dodging on the on the white water. That's going to now pop because I burned in the sand, which will go a lot darker, um, which instantly makes the white water pop. Okay, that's looking about right. Let's get that stopped and fixed and washed. Okay, so I'm on to the third negative now that I want to make a print of, or some reprints from the website. Uh, this, again, uh, similar settings, except I went nine seconds on the enlarger this time. It worked best. Uh, two and a half grade filter, still at F16. So when I've done this um, print here, this is just a test print still, I realized that I needed to dodge the waves, the water. It just wasn't, um, it, was, it was a bit gray, the water. So I just needed to use my dodge tool and just cover that for a few seconds over this area so then that white water will pop out and especially because it's in the center of the print I certainly want that to stand out so just use my dodge tool over there just to make the white water pop so uh, I could have used my hand here and just burnt in this area a little tiny bit more but I kind of liked it the way the pebbles were sitting there so you know sometimes too much vignetting can spoil an image depends what it is uh, I don't mind vignetting putting some heavy vignetting stuff in but with these images I felt it wasn't really necessary the pinhole camera already puts a little bit of vignetting in but uh, let's go we'll make a reprint of this one and I'll show you how to do this check my focus nothing worse than your larger slipping out of focus weird shit it hasn't actually it's such fine grain Okay, so this one again is a simple print. F16 on the larger, nine seconds, and all I need to do is just dodge some of the white water area, literally for a couple of seconds, just across like that, just to make it pop. So nice and easy to do.
papers in. Okay, nine seconds. Off it goes. Just a little bit of dodging. Like so. Done. Let's develop that one. So there you go, pinhole photography. I really do enjoy it. I saw the clouds, I knew it was going to be high tide, I knew it was windy, so off I went down the beach, got a bit messy, and uh, you know, got mucked in and got some nice photographs out of it, and some nice prints from the darkroom as well. Uh, one thing I do like about pinhole photography is you don't really have to think, as long as you've got a rough idea of what your exposure is, you just prop it up and take a shot if you need to adjust it or do a bit of cropping inside um, in Lightroom, Photoshop, or in the darkroom, then so be it, like I did here. Anyway, so I'll come out with some nice prints. Uh, those prints are gonna be on my website, guys. If you wanna support the channel, you can go on there and purchase these prints. Um, they're the only ones that I've made, and they're the only ones that are gonna go, gonna go on the site. So uh, jump on there and have a look. And thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the darkroom session. Very simple stuff. Little dodge tool, little burn tool, and a contrast filter. I'll catch you next time.